Welcome again to this ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we will display the full name of the logged in user into our application. Let's open the Visual Studio and let's run this application by pressing Ctrl F5. Let's quickly register a new user into the application. Click on the register button. Here, suppose here I'm writing application user. Let's enter the email user at the rate test.com. Let's enter the password. Password is 12345. Click on the sign up button. The new user has been added into this application, and now we need to log in by using the same username and password. The email was user at the rate test.com and the password was 12345. Let's click on the login button. Okay, so right now you can notice that here we are having the email ID that is the username of this particular user. What will happen if instead of using this email ID, I want to display the full name of this user? How can we do that in ASP.NET Core application? The first and very dirty approach is that we can use a view component over here and every time this page will get loaded, we can get the details from database just like the first name and last name and we can display it over here. But this is not the recommended way. Second approach is we can use claims that are provided by the identity framework. What does it mean by claims? In very simplest term, claims are basically the stories. And what can we save in that storage? Whatever information we want to add particular logged in user, we can store all these details into the claims. So just like first name, last name or any other details just like you have the profile pic URL then you can also add that profile pic URL into that claims and you can use these claims anywhere in your application. Let's understand how to work with the claims in ASP.NET Core application. Let's open Visual Studio. To work with the claims, we need to add a new file into this application. We can add that file anywhere in the solution. I'm adding the file into this helpers folder. So let's right click, choose add and click on the class. Let's give it a name. So here I'm writing application user claims principal factory. Click on the add button. We need to inherit this class from user claims principal factory class. So let's copy this class name and let's use this as a base class. Let's resolve the namespace. Okay, let's right click on this one and choose go to definition. Over here, you can notice that this is a generic class and we need to pass the application user while working with this user claims principal factory. Right now we are using a custom application user class in this application so i'll be using application user okay so there are a couple of things over here this is the first approach second one is if we are using the role manager into our application like the admin role user role etc then we can also pass the role manager over here and since we will also use the roles into this application so we can use the role as well over here and the roles are represented by identity role okay now let's right click on this one and choose go to definition this time you can notice that we are having the second version of this user claims principal factory class and here we are passing application user and the roles now now let's have a look on the constructor of this class here is the constructor and here we are passing three parameters first one is the user manager second one is the role manager and third one is the i options we have already covered the i options in few previous videos so if you are new to i options then i will recommend to watch all the previous videos and then you will understand the concept of this i options now let's call the base constructor and pass all these three parameters First of all, we need to use all three parameters over here and the first one was user manager. This user manager needs an application user just like this. Let's give it a name like the user manager. Then we need to use the role manager. And in the role manager, we need to pass the identity role. Let's give it a name role manager and third one was the options so here we can use the i options and in this i options we need to pass identity options 
let's call the base constructor by using the base keyword and here we can pass all these three parameters so first one is user manager second one is the role manager and third one is the options now again let's go to the definition of this class over here you can notice that we have a method generate claims async we need to override this method into our new class and basically we need to set all the claims in this method let's see how to do that let's override the method over here so we can simply use the override and then generate claims async press enter and the entire body has been created by the visual studio since we are dealing with the async methods over here so we need to use the async keyword and now instead of returning this data from here we need to store it into some other variable just like identity you can give any meaningful name to this particular variable here we can add all the claims that we want to assign for a particular user let's use the await keyword over here and now identity dot add claim here we can add n number of claims for the logged in user how to do that we need to use the claim class let's have a look on this claim class right click on this one and choose go to definition again here we are passing the type and the value here you can notice that there are multiple constructor for this particular claim class you can use any one of them as a first parameter you need to pass the type and then as a second parameter you need to pass the value what is the name of our key the name of the key is user first name you can give it any meaningful name and now we need to assign its value how to do that the details of the user is available in this user variable so here we can get it first name if it is null then we can simply use this operator and we can assign string dot empty value or the null value something like this if you want to add the last name also into the claims then you can do that easily here you can write the last name and then instead of using this first name this time i will be using last name and now we need to return the identity now we need to tell our application that we are using the custom version of this user claims principal factory class how to do that for that we need to go to the startup class and over here you can notice that we are registering all the services here we need to register one more service how to do that services dot add scope then here we need to pass the interface i user claims principal factory and since we are using a custom user so we can pass the application user the implementation is written into our application user claims principal factory that's it now we have registered the custom claims into our application now it is time to use these claims so that we can display the value onto our ui let's open the views folder go to the shared let's click on this login info cshtml we are using this parcel view to handle all the username login and password thing so here you can notice that we are displaying the email id by using this user.identity.name now instead of using this code i need to use the custom code that we have written into our application let's see how to do that user we can use the same user class to access all the claims here we can use the find first method and in the find first method we need to pass the key the key is user first name let's open the class let's copy this key and let's paste it over here then press dot and get its value this is how you can use a claim in asp.net core application and since we need to display the last name also so i can put all these details into a parenthesis let's give some space for the last name and here again i can write the same code for the last name this time instead of using this first name let's use the last name let's save all the changes build this application again run this application by pressing ctrl f5 let's again try to login into this application let's enter the same username and password the username is user at the rate test.com and then the password was 12345 click on the login button this time over here you can notice that we are having the actual name of this particular logged in user 
hello application user and this is the name of this particular user so this is how you can add the claims and use these claims into our application that is all in this video thank you for watching have a great day